is still a, a problem. The maintenance of them becomes more and more cumbersome every decade. But you don't see Japan or Germany threatening their neighbors with their bombs. Or their, their uh, plants, I should say. It is critical to remember that Iran has lied over and over and over again. Would the Iranians actually be willing to give international inspectors full access to all of their hidden nuclear facilities? That seems questionable at best. We'll get to that in a minute. In addition, the Western world is getting very little except for a shaky 10-year delay in the deal. In return, the Iranians will have everything that they originally wanted 10 years from now, including the ability to build all out all of the nuclear weapons that they could want. Such and there's a link for that. Such a deal so obviously one-sided and inimical in our national security interests and to those of our allies would stroke vehement overwhelming bipartisan opposition and refusal to lift sanctions. Within a decade or so, Iran will be poised, poised to develop industrial-sized nuclear programs with massive enrichment capabilities, rapid breakout capability, and an easier clandestine sneak-out option, says Dubwitz. Iran's supreme leader will soon get all that he says that he's always wanted, nuclear weapons, regional dominance, and a growing economy. All, you know, for a butcher to have, a madman, a Hitler in a headscarf, as Michael Savage says. It says they say the game set and they match it. It therefore would give Israel no choice but to act militarily, since the alternative would be unimaginable. Another example of how clueless the Obama administration is on foreign policy. It says ever since negotiations with Iran began, the Obama administration has been consistently giving ground. A New York Daily News article says, Why have the negotiations with the Obama administration and Iran become such a critical national security issue? Look at the record of betrayals of trust that has been enabled Iran to operate 19,000 centrifuges in another 1,008 IR-2 millimeter meter machines that can produce bomb-grade fissionable material five times faster than other centrifuges. Oh, but they're trustworthy, Sam. In 05, the West was saying to Iran, zero centrifuges. Let me repeat, zero. Next, we were talking about 5,000. In seven negotiations from 05 to 13, negotiations can be summed up in one word, retreat. It says, um, a nuclear-armed Iran is absolutely unthinkable. Nuclear, a nuclear weapons program would give the Iranians the capability of destroying the nation of Israel any time that it wanted. And even if some Israelis survived, life in the aftermath of any attack would be pure hell. And uh, this is from Louis René Baris. By extrapolation, overwhelming health problems would inflict the survivors of any Iranian nuclear attack upon Israel. Keep in mind the fallout would poison all of the Middle East, including the Iranians, mind you. These problems would extend beyond prompt burn injuries. Retinal burns would occur in the eyes of persons from far, far from the explosion. Many Israelis would be crushed by collapsing buildings and torn to shreds, shreds by flying glass. Others would fall victim to raging firestorms. It would rain fire in a nuclear holocaust like this. It says fallout injuries would include whole body radiation injury, which is painful beyond all ability to describe it, produced by penetrating hard gamma radiations, superficial radiation burns produced by soft radiations, and injuries produced by deposits of radioactive substances that would get into the body and just cook you from the inside out. After an Iranian nuclear attack, even a quote-unquote small one, those few medical facilities that might still exist in Israel would be taxed beyond capacity, water supplies would become unusable because they'd be poisoned. Housing and shelter would be unavailable for hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of survivors. Transportation would break down to rudimentary levels and there would be food shortages it would be critical for the long term. In other words, it would be the Holocaust all over again. Guys, a couple more to get to. Iran nuclear deal announced. Israel said it may bomb Iranian reactors after the U.S. hinted that it would do the same if a deal was not reached. Iran's foreign minister, Javid Zarif, has sent out a tweet indicating the deal. Uh, reached on Iran's nuclear program. It says, ready to start drafting immediately. But uh, Zaraf, European Union High Representative Frederica Mongerini and the U.S. are expected to make statements. 
What we expect today is a statement of the fact that we all have reached common understanding on how to resolve these issues. Yeah, to give Iran a nuclear bomb to blow everyone up with. That sounds like a great idea. The Prime Minister of Iran, Benjamin Netanyahu, issued a statement prior an official announcement on the negotiations and said any deal must be significantly able to roll back Iran's nuclear capabilities and stop its terrorism and aggression, he said. Earlier today, Yuval Steinitz, the Israeli intelligence minister, said the military option is on the table. That's because Iran will not even formally recognize the existence of Israel. How can you have a neighbor who can strike you dead and say that you weren't even a real country. Second of all, these madmen want the Jews out of Israel. If you bomb Israel, you will poison the land and nobody will be able to live there at all. Sounds like Allah just isn't thinking this morning. Uh, WashingtonPost.com, two stories to get to. Iran isn't providing the needed access or information, the nuclear watchdog says. Oh, but Iran's going to let you into the country and they're going to prove that they're only trying to get nuclear power and warm their families so that they can learn the religion of peace and the warmth of their house. Yeah. The head of the International Atomic Energy Agency said that Iran has failed to provide the information or access needed to ally the agencies concerned about the weapons potential of the country's nuclear program. With the deadline nearing for international talks on constraining Iran's nuclear program, Yakaira Amano, director of the IEA, IAEA, said in an interview that Iran has replied to just one of 12 queries and possible military dimensions of past nuclear activities that they lied about. Amano said that Iran has provided only very limited information about two other issues, while the rest have not been addressed at all. Recently, the progress is very limited, he said. Uh, the United Nations Watchdog Group, which, again, anything under the UN you know is useless, and its inspections are considered a key safeguard against countries using civilian nuclear energy technology to produce weapons. How about not opening the power plant? Then you won't have the problem, and you won't have the meltdowns either. Failure by Iran to comply with the IAEA demands would undermine the country's efforts to win lifting the UN sanctions, which uh, should never happen. Amano said that the six global powers negotiating with Iran should insist that the country implement the additional protocol that would allow IAEA inspectors to go anywhere at any time to examine sites suspected of harboring secret nuclear weapons development, which they said they were going to do, which they promised they were going to do, and they lied, so we're supposed to trust them now. It says he, uh, that he spoke to Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javid Zarif on February 7th in Munich, but noted that Iran has not yet provided the information that the agency needs, and yet we're still dealing with them while they threaten to blow up the world. Amano met Tuesday with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. He's all but useless. He was scheduled to meet later with President Obama, also useless. Um, the National Security Advisor, Susan E. Rice mostly useless. That additional protocol, Amano said, will be very much needed. It will give us more powerful tools to look at the activities not declared to us. In other words, that they lied to us about. He said that in the past, the agency has had two to four inspections in Iran, but recently there has been as many as ten. Iran signed the protocol. They signed it. They agreed to it. They lied like they always do in December of 03 and initially implemented it, but the country ended its compliance in 06 because they lie, as all of these fascist Islamic countries do. Again, I said the fascist ones. Amano said that near the top of the list of unanswered questions about possible military dimensions of Iranian nuclear activities was Pachin Military Complex. He said that the IAEA has information that Iran conducted experiments in high explosive chambers there. But they're, it's the real, they want it for peace. They want it for peace. Yeah, pieces. They want to blow you to pieces. It's the religion of pieces. We would like to have access, and we would like to clarify, Amano said. We said Iran had twice given IAEA inspectors access to the base. But he added that Parachin is a huge area with many buildings. Now he said the IAEA thinks it has identified the right place to visit, but has the access been blocked? Yes. 
After the agency requested admittance to the area in 11, it observed by satellite extensive landscaping, demolition, and new construction there. And everyone's going to blame Israel when they bomb these Iranian bastards like it was Israel's fault. And I'm not a Zionist, but I don't want to see all Jews destroyed because I don't like Zionists. Amano said that looking at the sites with military and nuclear potential was like a jigsaw puzzle. We have a better understanding of one issue, but we have a better understanding of another issue. He said that the IAE's failure to detect Iran's nuclear weapons program in the 1980s, they've been useful forever, haven't they? had forced the agency to demand unfettered access to countries suspected of building nuclear weapons. Well, they demanded that in the 80s, and they're not getting it in 2015. They sound incredibly useful to me. I hope they get millions. In openly declared sites, he said, the agency places cameras and seals in strategic places so that it can detect abnormalities in a timely manner, ranging from a day to a week. Amano's comments come after the February 19th report the agency sent to the member governments that complained about Iran's lack of responsiveness. In other words, them hiding and lying! Which bring us to the damn dumdy of the day, which also goes, Iran, Hezbollah left off the terror threat listing. Leaving Hezbollah off of a terror 